Hello, this is Bob Gray Sr. Welcome to Ministry Moments. If you go to Ministry Moments YouTube, you can subscribe. And every Friday at 3 o'clock Central Time, Lord willing, we'll be having a Ministry Moments broadcast. And you can uh, uh, watch it uh, every week. Hopefully it'll be very practical and very helpful to you. Nothing complicated, just down to earth, tab A, slot B. And today, and by the way, you can go to uh, softchurchproblems.com and subscribe there. And so uh, there's a lot of material there that might be of, of help to you. All right. Today, I want to talk to you about soul winning and the family. There's a picture behind me. We took one Christmas of all the kids and the in-laws and the outlaws and everybody. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to tell you that all of them are soul winners. All of them are uh, a part of their life. It's just getting the gospel of the people. I'm very, very, very proud of them. Every, every uh, end of the year at Christmas time, I used to total up all the baptisms for all of the family. And it was kind of a, a, a goal to, to make sure that we beat ourselves for the year before. And uh, God is so good to us. And I'm glad I've got two boys that are pastoring churches and very proud of them. And we've got two girls who want to pastor churches, but we won't let them. <laughs> they think they could do a good job. But I want to talk to you about soul winning and the family. And uh, Mrs. Gray and I have been married 55 years. We have uh, four children, 10 grandchildren, eight going on nine great-grandchildren. And uh, we're certainly very proud of all of them. But our, our family has always been a soul winning family, always, from day one. When uh, we first uh, came under the influence of, uh, of Dr. Rice and Dr. Lee Robertson, Brother Hiles, Lester Roloff, Tom Malone, all those great men, all of them were aggressive soul winners. And I wanted to make sure that I was, and make sure that my wife and I were, but also that our children were. And uh, and I'm great. I'm I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the blessings. But let me give you some very practical helps here on sowing and the family. All right. Number one. You can be both a family church and a soul winning church. I, from the day that I started full-time service, well, that's a family church over there, and that's a soul winning church over there. That's just doesn't have to be that way. We've proved it in the churches that we've pastored, and we've proved it. Uh, I've seen it all over the country being proven uh, to not be true because you can have both a soul winning church and a family church. We had both and uh, tickled with both. Number two, set a time to go together as a family. Set a time to go together as a family. Let the family see dad winning souls. Let the family see mom win souls. Uh, we went soul winning when my wife was carrying our firstborn. And uh, before they, she was ever, Kimberly ever came into the world, we, we were winning souls. We want our family to be a soul winning family. So number one, you can have both a soul winning church and a family church. Don't let people discourage you and say you can only have one or the other. That's not true. That's like saying you can only preach one sermon of one truth. That's just, it's just not true. Number two, set a time together uh, to go soul winning. Set a time together to go as a family soul winning. Number three, set a time to go soul winning with each family member. I would take my girls one time. I take the boys another time and, uh, to have some individual time so they could see dad uh, winning souls and dad's a soul winner and they knew dad was a soul winner and it helped to help them to become the soul winners that uh, they, they should be. So talking about soul winning and the family, number one, you can be both a family church and a soul winning church, but don't let somebody tell you you can't because it's not true. You can set a time to go together as a family. Uh, maybe you can work a bus route together. That's what we did. We worked a bus route together and one souls together, fill that bus together. And number three, set a time to go with each family member. So I remember one time Scott, we were up North and Scott uh, said, dad, I want to go by myself. I want to do it by myself. And I said, okay. So we stood on one side of the street. He went across, knocked on the door, the lady opened the door, cracked it and shut it. And Scott kept standing, open it and then shut it again. He come back and I said, well, Scott, how'd it go? He said, nobody got saved, dad, but he pulled out of his pocket a $5 bill, but she gave me $5. He said, this soul went really paid. <laughs> now, soul winning and the family. Number one, you can be both 
a soul winning church and a family church. You can be both. Number two, set a time to go together as a family. Number three, set a time to go with each family member. Number four, when you pick up converts for church, take a family member with you. When you pick up converts for church, take a family member with you. And we're Karen and I led some folks to Christ and and she and she come home and said, Daddy, we've got to help them. We've got to help them. And her heart was tenderized by it. Our kids have knocked on doors and come back and say, Daddy, that, that family has no food. They have nothing. And uh, I've said this, my wife doesn't like this, but she she's not listening right now. But I think every Christian school kid ought to get a good cussing every week. I don't think it's the principal that does it, the teacher that does it, but I think they ought to see Satan's payoff, knock on a door and see no food, uh, uh, bad situation in the family. That's the devil's payoff. And that way they'll come back and they'll, they'll say, daddy, I want nothing to do with that. I, I want to make sure that I marry a good man or a good woman and have a good family. So winning in the family, number one, you can have both. A family church and a soul winning church, you can have both. Number two, set a time to go together as a family. Number three, set a time to go with each family member. Number, number four, when you pick up converts for church, take, take one of the family members with you so they can see not only the people being saved, but being picked up and brought to church. Next, have the converts sit with your family. Have the converts sit with your family. We did that a lot. Uh, sit with mom, sit with uh, the kids, and some of the kids can't be in the adult choir. Mom's in the adult choir, but the, the convert can can sit there. So, number one, you can be both a soul winning church and a family church. Don't let somebody talk you out of that. Number two, set a time to go together as a family. Number three, set a time to go with each family member. Next, when you pick up converts for church, take the family member with you. Get in the car. So here's our list. We've got people to pick up this morning and have them to be with you when you pick them up. Next, have the converts sit with your family during the preaching and uh, during that time, and then have them walk down the aisle with them and have it through your family members used to that. You're used to having converts sit next to them. They're used to walking the aisle with converts by their side. It's just it's just what we do. We go to church, sing hymns, give offerings, and walk converts down the aisle. It's just who we are. All right, so when in the family, number one, you can be both. Don't let somebody talk you out of it. You can be a family church and a soul winning church. Number two, set a time to go together as a family. Number three, set a time to go with each family member. Next, when you pick up converts, take them to church, uh, have them sit with the family members. Go with the family to pick them up, get them to church, then have the converts sit with the family in the pews. Next, have a prayer list of converts. Have a prayer list of converts. You have those that you've led to Christ in your New Testament, your kids will and your wife will, then just make that your prayer list and pray for them. Pray they've come and walk there. Pray for them that they'll do uh, for, uh, fall in love with the Lord and just give their whole life to him. Number seven, take a family member, uh, take a family member for follow up. Take a family member for follow up. So you lead somebody to Christ. You went by <clears throat> unable to make contact with them. You went by the next week, couldn't make contact, but you keep going. You commit thou to faithful men. You just keep going as long as they'll let you. And then you take the son or the daughter with you so that on the follow-up, they can see you're not just winning them to Christ and then dropping them. Um, somebody would ask me, how do you keep up with all those names in that New Testament? It's up to them, not me. Commit thou to faithful men, Paul said to Timothy. I'm looking for people who want what I have. When I go so many, I'll go as far as you'll let me go. I'm going any farther. You don't want me. I'm, I'm gone. I'm out of here. Somebody's going to want to talk to me. And uh, so please understand, I go as far. When I knock on a door and somebody said they would come and they didn't come and they said, oh, boy, they start rolling their eyes like that. Well, I know what they're saying is you bother me. Why well, am I going to bother you again? But if they say, oh, preacher, I told you I'd come. I, I should have come. Please forgive me. I'll be there next week. Well, I'm going to go back for that person. So that's my follow up. I go as far as they let me go. All right, back, let's back up, see what we got. Soul winning and the family. Number one, you can be both a soul winning church and a family church. Don't let some liberal talk you out of this thing of the Great Commission and the commandment of winning souls. Number two, set a time to go together as a family. Work, we work bus routes. We worked an A bus route. We worked a B bus route. We worked an uh, educationally slow bus route in Hammond, but we worked it as a family. Uh, next, set, set a time to go with each family member alone with them. 
Next, when you pick up converts for church, have the family member go with you. Have somebody go with you when you pick them up so they can see. You win them to Christ, you pick them up, you bring them to church, all right? When you pick up, have the converts sit with your family during the service. Next, have a prayer list of converts. Next, take a family member with you for follow-up. When you go back again, I, 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 I missed you. I, you said you would come. Uh, I have questions that I can answer. Then you go back for follow-up. Now, that's sowing and the family. Don't let somebody talk you out of, I'm saying, oh, that's that, that church over there. That's a, that's a sowing church. That's not a family church. Uh, no, you can be both a family church and a soul in church, depending on your emphasis. If you understand going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature is a mandate from God, then you'll do that. And then you can do it as a husband and a wife. You can do it as a husband and wife and children. And you can go and take the gospel to the whole world. The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, First Corinthians chapter 15, is the gospel. Well, that's soul we and the family. This is Ministry Moments. I hope that you'll join us every Friday. Go to Ministry Moments YouTube and subscribe. Would you do that? And then that way you'll be able to get it every Friday, three o'clock, just like, just like that. And go to solvechurchproblem.com. Subscribe there too. A lot of great things there to be of help to you. God bless you. Tomorrow, soul winning. Have a great day. Lead some people to Christ. Pick them up and bring them to church as a family.